What happens if the price of Bitcoin triples from here, Milan, to the supply? What happens? Absolutely nothing. The supply is programmed. The scarcity is insured. And Bitcoin is extremely cheap insurance on the Fiat Ponzi. And you can think of it as money. You can think of it as insurance. You can think of it as asset. You can think of it as digital gold. Discovering Bitcoin was like discovering flight or discovering electricity or discovering, you know, radio waves. I mean, it's it's digital scarcity. It's a way to create an entry that's scarce and immutable. In 1729, about 244 years ago, French writer and philosopher Voltaire said, paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value zero. There are multitudes of other quotes describing the futility of being completely dependent on any fiat currency, regardless of how strong it is today or any asset that thrives on the fiat system. Over the years, several Bitcoin advocates have described the fiat system as a giant Ponzi scheme, which like all Ponzi schemes is quickly unraveling and would soon be reduced to zero. For a currency like the United States dollar, this might not occur in a few years or even during our lifetime, but the more they print new debt to get out of old debt, the deeper into the spiral we sink and the closer we get to a worthless currency. Valdez Power Corp executive and former hedge fund manager Greg Foss describes the fiat Ponzi succinctly in a new post on social media platform X. The post reads, The U.S. government defines a Ponzi scheme as an investment fraud that pays existing investors with funds collected from new investors. Wait, doesn't this describe the U.S. debt spiral? Hence fiat Ponzi. Bitcoin fixes this. At the moment, the United States has about $200 trillion in funded and unfunded liabilities, backed by $5 trillion worth of assets, dwindling tax revenues, and rapidly increasing debt expenses. That's why people like Foss, who understand both sides of the coin, the fiat side, which he describes as nothing but credit, and the Bitcoin side, have repeatedly warned about the dangers of being completely reliant on the Ponzi scheme. While Bitcoin has a limited supply, is not controlled by any single person or entity, and is backed by the most powerful computer network in existence, the US dollar, a suitable representative for the fiat system, has an unlimited supply, is centrally controlled, and is backed by nothing. During a recent interview with the Bitcoin vs. the Banks YouTube channel, Foss and popular sound money advocate Lawrence Lepard discussed the importance of Bitcoin and why it is the supreme asset compared to other forms of money like gold and fiat currencies like the US dollar. According to Foss, a former risk guy, you would be making a huge mistake if you have no allocation whatsoever to Bitcoin. The Validus Power Corp executive explains that the only thing with absolute certainty in the world is the sure debasement of all fiat currencies. Understanding and accepting that is knowing that you need insurance against the accelerating demise of all fiat currencies. According to Greg Foss, nothing comes close to Bitcoin as insurance against fiat debasement. We will now bring you clips from this highly fascinating discussion and the ultimate orange pilling experience. Foss and Leopard discuss why it is absolutely important that you buy Bitcoin even when people like Warren Buffett say they aren't buying. Please watch, share, and give this video a thumbs up. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications and drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. One thing I can say with 100% certainty is that fiat money is programmed to debase and it will debase at an accelerating basis over time because of the debt spiral. So if you start with that 100% certainty, and again, very few things are 100% certainty. You ask yourself, how do I protect against that certainty? And I happen to believe Bitcoin is the best protection that man has ever designed. Man or woman has ever designed. From that perspective, I believe owning zero Bitcoin is irresponsible risk management. So if you want to tell your father-in-law that he's being irresponsible, by investing alongside Warren Buffett, who also has not done the work, then go ahead. But I will stand by the statement that owning zero Bitcoin is actually more risky than having a proper portfolio allocation. And every investor is different. My portfolio allocation is gonna be higher than his portfolio allocation. But if you own zero, it's implying that you are 100% certain that Bitcoin cannot succeed. Then I'll ask you, so what are your assets that you're using to protect against the certainty that fiat money is debasing? And he may say gold, and I'll say that's good. 
but I think Bitcoin is better. And he'll say, I own real estate. And I'll say, that's good. But I actually think Bitcoin is better. Both of these are what's called hard assets. And he might say, I own bonds. And I'm going to look at him square in the eyes and say, you are a fool. Because you have lived the last 30 years of interest rates going down. And now they're finally ticking back up. And your bond portfolio is getting shredded. And guess what? fiat money is it's just credit and so fiat is debasing and all of this debt spiral which is a certainty is debasing because it's a fiat contract and you ask your father-in-law this for me if he owned owns any bonds he failed mathematics or he can own bonds and protect that by owning bitcoin I mean, Buffett is an older man. Um, I believe he's in his 90s. I know his partner is 100. Um, and he's never been particularly forward thinking or particularly technologically savvy. He, he missed a lot of the techn technology trends uh, that have taken place in the last 20 or 30 years. And he's benefited enormously from operating in a, in a fiat system. Um, he, you know, he is a contillionaire in the sense that by being able to get inside deals and buy things cheap, like he did in 2008 when he bought a you know a pref in Goldman Sachs, knowing the government was going to bail it out, um, he he lives and breathes and benefits from the system that we now have. And so you know, like Upton Sinclair said, it's hard to get a man to understand something that would hurt his pocketbook, and uh, Bitcoin definitely hurts his pocketbook. And so I don't think he's taken the time to really understand it, or if if he does, it's unclear. He's a smart man. Perhaps he does understand it and he recognizes that it's an existential threat to, to the game that he's running into what he does. And so, um, you know, either either or it doesn't matter. The allocation of zero is dead ass wrong, as Greg has pointed out. So um, just because a good investor, a historically good investor who operated in a fiat system doesn't support it, I don't think that alone is a reason to disqualify it as something you want to hold in your portfolio, um, because, you know, he also didn't pick up on the internet. He, he now owns Apple, but he was very late in buying it. He doesn't tend to be very forward thinking. So, um, you know, which is not to say he's not a good investor in terms of picking up cheap assets and watching them appreciate. He's done a great job. Another common argument that critics of Bitcoin put forward against the leading crypto asset is the erroneous belief that it is backed by nothing. According to Lippard, an investment manager and Austrian economist, money at its core is a ledger system a system that predates fiat currencies and gold and dates back to cavemen using tallies on cave walls to keep track of transactions. Lippard adds that people are used to the older, more physical versions of money and expect the same of Bitcoin. However, the leading crypto asset is only a vast improvement on the existing financial system. It still uses the same ledger system that banks do, but instead of one that can easily be controlled by an entity or group, the Bitcoin network offers much more security and the crypto asset represents true digital scarcity. Foss also explains the concept of Bitcoin as an insurance against the fiat Ponzi. Not just an ordinary insurance that can protect you against the many failings of the fiat system, but also the cheapest insurance there is. Here are more clips from the interview. father-in-law has to get over, and the thing that everyone needs to fully understand is that Bitcoin is a foundational technology, and Greg, as, a, as an engineer, really understands this extremely well. Discovering Bitcoin was like discovering flight or discovering electricity or discovering, you know, radio waves. I mean, it's, it's digital scarcity. It's a way to create an entry that's scarce and immutable. And digital scarcity has never existed before. And immutable digital scarcity is a really important technological development, which then allows you, because of the way the system was constructed, to know that there's a limit on the amount of these digitally scarce coins that can be commit, uh, created, and that's 21 million. Of course, we're at 19 and change now. So because you have this true digital scarcity, this thing, these Bitcoins are actually coming to serve as money. I mean, all of those who bought Bitcoin believe that it is money, it will continue to be money, and it'll increasingly grow as money. And, and again, it's, it's because it's liquid, and it's socially accepted. Now, if we all didn't believe in it, it wouldn't be money. But if you look at its characteristics, and that is the non-inflationary principles, the lower stock to flow ratio, the immutability of it, and the ability to transact very quickly over very long time frames with instant settlement, in that respect, it's much better than gold. I mean, try to send a billion dollars of gold from country A to country B. 
you know, you'd need a jet, jet airliner and a, and a security team. So try to send a billion dollars of Bitcoin. You can do it in 10 minutes. So um, it, it really is, in my opinion, it is a form of digital gold and it will ultimately it will surpass gold. And people need to get around the notion that you have to have something physical for that thing to be called money. In a digital world, a digitally secure token that is immutable can act as money. I actually don't think of Bitcoin purely as money or as a digital ledger. I love it for those characteristics. I believe Bitcoin is insurance. It's credit insurance. It can be valued using credit default swaps on sovereign debtors and actually come up with an intrinsic value. Why? Because Bitcoin is anti-fiat. Bitcoin is the antithesis of what fiat money is. And therefore, if people are out buying insurance on sovereign debt because they are concerned with the ability of those debtor nations to pay back their obligations, Bitcoin can be that insurance policy. And it's even better. That insurance policy has no counterparty. I don't need to buy this insurance from a big Wall Street investment bank. I don't need to buy it from an insurance company. I can buy it as an insurance policy. I value Bitcoin as intrinsic value as insurance. Okay, I'm a credit guy. Fiat is credit. And I want insurance on that credit. And there's a market of open market, large, sophisticated players who buy and sell insurance on sovereign nations, including, yes, sir, the United States of America. There are people that are concerned that one day, the USA will not be able to pay its bills. Now, I know they'll be able to print money to pay those bills, because that's what they've done the whole time, increasing the supply of that money. But what if there's a form of a soft default where people, like in Venezuela, just say, I don't take this paper money anymore. As payment, it's worthless. I need insurance on that scenario. That's what Bitcoin is for me. A brilliant young man from Brazil, Hoffa, has my intrinsic value of Bitcoin calculated on NakamotoPortfolio.com, real time. I can tell you under various scenarios that Bitcoin should be valued at at least 400,000 US dollars per Bitcoin using that model. And it's trading at less than one tenth of that amount. Okay, it's trading at about one fifteenth of that amount if we had to do the math. The point is, I like to buy cheap insurance. And Bitcoin is extremely cheap insurance on the Fiat Ponzi. Foss and Lippert are both strong advocates of hard assets like gold and silver. But as much as they advocate that you put some percent of your investment portfolio in these assets, they caution that they are not as solid as Bitcoin. Foss gives an example of the 20 million tons of gold that lie hidden in the ocean waters. Though it will be extremely difficult to get to all that gold, Foss believes many miners around the world will be very motivated if gold as much as doubles from its current price. One attribute that has continued to put gold on the sound money list is its scarcity. What happens when it's no longer as scarce? In contrast, Bitcoin has a permanently fixed supply of 21 million coins, and no matter how high prices go, the supply will never be increased. What are your thoughts on Foss and Leapard's interview? Do you agree that Bitcoin is the best insurance policy against fiat debasement and everyone should be sufficiently exposed to Bitcoin? Please drop your comments and observations below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.